Hello guys, my name is Balkrishna Shrivastav and welcome to Code with BK. So in this video, we solve section B questions of IC 2024 Computer Science Board's paper. So before we begin, it is a request to please, 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 please subscribe to my channel because out of 100 viewers, only 4 or 5 are subscribed and a subscription is very important. More than 90% of my audience is not subscribed and a subscription is very important. So please, 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 please do subscribe to my channel. So I will be solving section B questions, question 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. Okay, I'll just be showing the solutions in this case. Okay, because uh, the paper was today, right? And there are a lot of students who want the answers to this. Okay, section A solution, I will be adding maybe in a few hours or maybe by tomorrow. Okay, because that takes a little more time and detailing, right? So section A, I'll be adding tomorrow. Okay, I will add the links for all the codes and solutions in the description of this video. So make sure that you check the description of this video. Okay. Also, I will be solving the same solution in Hindi on my Code with Biki Hindi channel by tomorrow. So if you are better comfortable with Hindi, you can find the link of that video in the description of this video. Okay. The video will be uploaded by tomorrow. Okay. And one more thing is that the quality of the images, okay, is not very great in this video, right? So what I'll do is I'll add a link to the question paper itself, right? In the description of this video. So you can download a question paper from there and that would be having better images, right? I had nothing but this so I had to solve and upload it today okay so starting with question 6 take a minute give this a reading okay all right so this is the solution to question 6 okay you had to create a deci hex class okay and you had to use recursion when converting the integer to its corresponding hexadecimal value so number system conversion is a very standard thing okay so I have followed all the requirements okay and you also had to write a main okay so couple of things that you have to take care of here is let me just run this first okay so if I enter say 25, okay, hexadecimal equivalent is 19, which is true, okay. Then I enter 28, hexadecimal equivalent is 1C, okay. So one thing that I have done here is now it depends upon you how you code this is if I enter 0, I won't be getting any output, okay. So for integer number 0, hexadecimal equivalent is also 0. You have to print 0 for integer 0, okay. So in that case, what you can do is you can do hex is 0 plus hex, okay, on your base case when the recursion returns. So now if you do 0, it will come out to be 0. But now this is adding an extra 0 to your other values, okay, like 0, 1, it is still the correct conversion, but it is adding an extra 0, okay. If I do 28, it will be 0, 1, C, okay. To fix this, what you can do is you can say if uh, num equal to 0, Okay, you can do hex is 0, straightforward, okay, else you call convert num, okay, alright, and we remove this in the base case, okay. Now we'll have both the cases as we want, so if I for enter 0, I get 0, okay, if I enter 28, I don't get an extra 0, okay, if I enter 100, it should be 64, okay, recursion was the main thing here, okay, and in this case, they are passing an integer in this function. So this integer has to be passed from display method when you are calling convert. And this num is the number that we are reading from the input. Okay. Read through the solution and let me know the, in the comments if you have any doubts. Okay. Moving on to question seven. Okay. Insertion sort contains. Okay. You have to do insertion sort in this case. Okay. And you also have to find the average of all the odd numbers in the array. So I was very surprised to see insertion sort, but I mean, it is what it is. They are trying new things at times. So this is insertion sort code. You have to read values from the user. And also they have given you a separate data member size to store the size of this array. Okay. You could always use arr.length, but you see I'm using size everywhere. Here, here, here. Okay. Because if you are given a separate data member to store the size, you must be making use of it. Obviously, you can replace this size by arr.length everywhere, okay. But since they have mentioned a separate data member to store the number of elements in the array, you have to, you should be using this, okay, all right. Things to note in this solution is, first of all, the your insertion sort is standard, okay, nothing, nothing to be done here. Tricky thing is in this find, okay, where you are calculating the average. Now, when I run this, okay, I am creating an array of size 10. So, if I say enter 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2 and... 3, 2, okay. So only 3s and only 2s, so average of all numbers is 3. So the tricky thing here is two things is when you are finding the total, you have to add all the odd numbers and the average will be the sum of odd numbers by the number of odd numbers. 
So you also have to count the number of odd numbers for which I have taken a counter separately. The second tricky thing here is you make sure that you don't end up into integer division. Okay. So if I make this int total and int num odd. Okay. So I might not get the exact answer. I might just get the quotient because of integer division. Even though if I have a, if I have a double value here, an integer goes into a double as a double. Okay. But right now total and num odd are both integers. So if I do say three five five. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Now you see I get the average of odd numbers as 4.0. Okay. But it should be 5, 5 plus 10, 13. 13 by 3 should give me 4.333. Okay. But since I am doing integer division, my total comes out to be 13. 13 by num odd is 3. 13 by 3 integer division gives me 4, which is printed as a double value. So make sure that one of your numerator or denominator is a double when you are finding the average. Now when I run this, okay, uh, 3, 5, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I get 4.3, which is correct, okay. So this is the solution and you also have to write a main, okay. Moving to question 8 then, okay. So this is the solution for question 8, okay. Again, things to note here is, first is you are given a separate data member len to store the length of the word. Now again, we can find the length of the word as word dot length. But since they are providing you a separate data member as they were for the size in the previous case, right? Make sure that you use len wherever, wherever you have to find the length of the word. Okay. So I store the length of the word the moment I read in the word and everywhere else, wherever I have to find uh, the length of the word, I use len and not wrd dot length. Okay. All right. This is just to make sure that you are making use of the data member that has been provided. Okay. And then there is, they are using ASCII values. I believe I recently uploaded a video where you have to find the lowest and highest ASCII. Okay. You set them to the first character in the string and then you compare with the remaining characters. Okay. So let me just run this. Okay. I say Java. Okay. 74, 77, 18, 11, which is correct. Okay. Let me just enter my name. Paul Krishna. Okay. So lowest is 66, which is upper case B. Right. And highest ASCII code is 115, which should be, I guess, N, S. Okay. All right. So this is my question eight solution. Moving on to question nine. So question nine was a question about stacks, basically. Okay. So uh, first in last out is basically last in first out is basically a stack. Okay. Because you are adding to the top, removing from the top. You have to complete these two methods. The remaining code I have added. Okay to get this running. Okay. So let me run this. Okay. So I start with a card game that has capacity five. I display. So right now my card game is empty. So I don't get anything in the output. Okay. Then I add three cards and I display. So I add 12, four and seven. So the top of the stack should be seven, which is this. Okay. So I'm printed in a neat manner. So it appears as a stack. Okay. Then I draw the top card. So top card drawn should be seven, which is shown as seven. And then I print the stack again. Okay. I can draw and print again. Okay. So the current top is 4. Okay. ELF is 4 and 12. So 4 should be output. Okay. And then top is 12. Okay. All right. You can test this further to get return minus 9999 when there is no top card to draw. Or you can keep adding cards to get this message card palace 4. Okay. So what I can do is I can do this twice. Okay, you'll somewhere get a message card palace for you. Okay, twice. Okay. Moving on to question 10. Okay. So question 10, you had this. Okay. So question 10 solution is this. Okay. So this class was not given. This I have coded. Okay. So that I can get the right output. You had to complete this part. Okay. You had to complete constructor, calcile, and show. Okay. This is a standard question of inheritance that they usually ask. Okay. The samples for this can be found in the previous question papers as well. Okay. In the over time uh, constructor, you had to take values for the super class as well. You okay? can make sure that you do extends em employee cell because this over time is a subclass of uh, M cell. Okay. It has been defined as so a subclass over time. Okay. And so, and you just have to make sure that you pass the values for all the members of the uh, M style class. Okay, the order does not matter. I am doing M num. Now, one more thing is, they have given M num as the name of the employee. Okay, so this sounds like a number. Okay, 
but you should go with the description where it says it is the name of the employee so you have to assume that this is a string okay all right because it's the name of the employee then you have integer to store the code which is an int and then to store the salary okay so you make sure that you pass a string which is for the name and integer for the employee code and a double for the salary in the constructor of overtime and it takes hours as well upon which we calculate the overtime total salary is calculated this is not taken as a data member okay in cal salary you calculate total salary so if total salary set to salary as greater than 40 we add 5000 as between 40 and 30 both inclusive you add 10 3000 otherwise you don't add it okay in my show i call the super class show first okay which shows all the details and then i call cal sal and i print to a salary okay very standard question right let me run this so for this sample for balkrishna my employee id is 161616 i am hardly making any money these days no kidding i'm just making like 10000 a week which is very, very very low and then my overtime my working hours is also very low because i'm not working for money these days so my working hours is only 20 so i don't get any bonus if i make this 30 i might get a 3000 bonus yep i do okay if i maybe work for another say 41 hours i get a 5000 bonus okay so this was question 10 right okay very standard question you just have to make sure that you follow the requirements moving on to question 11 okay now the first tricky thing that they did here was to ask about this dominant term now this is not very difficult but this is something that i have not seen in the previous question papers and even with the icsc paper they were very creative okay so it's just that the syllabus remains same but the way of asking questions the way of framing questions is getting creative and it is changing a little uh, year by year so uh, briefly explain the dominant term so dominant term is basically the term that dominates that basically determines the running time okay or in a complexity right for example if we have complexity something like this so this n square term the largest term will always dominate okay because as n increases the impact of this n square will be much more than the other two okay so that's why in a formal way you can write this as the dominant term is the term that gets biggest as n gets bigger because and you can give an example like this okay then we have answered the following questions i recently posted a video telling you everything about binary trees so external nodes as i told you external nodes or leaves leaves or leaf nodes so you have f i c n g okay the one with zero children okay also i also told you about the degree okay degree is the number of children so m has two children degree of m is two l has one child so degree of l is one then i have post order traversal which is this okay left right center okay so this was the solution to section b questions okay and i'll, I'll be uploading section a questions solutions very soon okay so make sure that you subscribe to our channel okay uh, please let me know your thoughts about this video please let please also let me know if i marked a question wrong but i i believe uh, all the uh, solutions are posted are correct okay let me know if i missed out anything okay and make sure that you please check in the description of this video for all the important links so please let me know your thoughts on this video please do like please do subscribe and you can always let me know in the comments if there is a question you want to solve or if there is a concept you want to discuss thank you